Are you ready for this? We're here! Hey, hi. hi, what's your name? I'm Joe Fowler. Hi, I'm Ron Popeil. I chose anybody. Hi, what's your name? I'm Tom Purvis, trainer to the trainers. And hi, I'm Mike Levy. Hold on to your power rod. But wait. What are you doing? Call now. Call now. Call now. Call or log on now. Call now. Call right now. Call in the next 18 minutes. Call in the next 16 minutes. Call in the next 7 minutes. Call these numbers right now. Hello and welcome to Call Now, where we plunge headfirst into the surreal world of infomercial. And while we can't offer you free shipping, we can guarantee that the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are definitely those of this network. Thank you, Tim. My name is Dan Sturdivant. I'm joined as always by my co-host on this three men we've known as Call Now. Well... We may not have an entire Girl Scout troop in our studio audience, but we do have Mark Pedrotti. Hello, Mark. Hey, how you doing? I'm actually doing, wait, carry the two. No, you don't. Uh, no, two, you, three, don't no. Oh, don't. you don't. Oh, I don't. You don't. Oh, I don't. Them. You start from oh. the left. Okay. Start so I'm not good then. I'm not good. I'm not You're good. You're not good. We figured that out. And listen, everyone I know is just dying to turn on the human calculator inside of Dave Sandrini. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Uh, Y equals MX plus B. <laughs> and guys, this guy, this guy is definitely tired of hearing about how America's educational system is falling apart. It is our call now resident <laughs> mathematics expert, Jared Chivers. Hello, Jared. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You know, oh. I got a lot of weight on my back. The responsibility of America. We're going to be mm-hmm. counting on you here. You do have the sure. keys to America's future in your hand. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, just to catch everyone up, if you did miss it last week, check out the link to the Full Watch Party episode, both as a podcast and on YouTube. We put our sweaters back on for the first time in a while and ran around with, with our old buddy Mike Levy and his new pal Scott Flansberg and learned about the amazing discovery of how any one of us could become the human calculator. Coming up next on Amazing Discoveries, we'll show you how to turn on the human calculator in you. Now, here's the host of Amazing Discoveries, Mike Levy. Welcome, welcome. I want you to meet a friend of mine who is fondly referred to as the human calculator. You'll see why. Scott Flansburg. So, I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't a very good math student. All right, Dan. I'm what you would probably call an early riser 19 inches or talent reliant i want to look like that guy so like for the things that <laughs> i understood like multiplication tables here's a varnish table like right around third grade aircraft grade aluminum peak performance are we better crush that yes you are i understood like pre-algebra whatever you haven't taught or tried before forget it and then from there it was i was good i was like this is all the math i'll ever need this will be the last putter you ever buy and I basically tapped out and found fun and interesting ways to opt out or replace math classes. Like in college, I took one math class. Everything Mm -hmm. else I replaced with Spanish. Nobody could understand the word you say. Liberal arts. I'll uh, inundate this frying pan with some olive oil like that. Mm. Mark, Dave, would you care to describe your math skills and or qualifications before we get any further, just to make sure we're all on the same page? My girlfriend cut the white pages. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mark, were you ever in the same math class in high school? Yeah, I was in your geometry class for about two weeks and I dropped it. Look quick, I'll pick up. I need it. <laughs> yeah. You also, first day of class, you, the teacher, Miss Chip, passed around a piece of paper and said, hey, everybody write down what you want to be called in this class. And Dave wrote Bones. Here comes your bone-in ribeye, brother man. And for the entire time <laughs> I took that class, she was calling him Bones until Dave was just like, "I yeah, sorry, call me Dave. Like, I can't do this. We got a trash can right here. No, she canceled me. When you were a star, they let you do it. Because she was like, because <laughs> oh. she realized I was a trash student. It may look like trash, but there's a treasure underneath. And she was like, we're not calling you Bones anymore. Fall off the bone. Oh, yeah. It's not funny anymore. After your first quiz. Yeah, honeymoon was like over. A honey pecan turkey. Yeah. That was trig, not geometry. Take that for data. That was trig, that's right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't know the difference between trig and geometry across the three of us, which I think <laughs> I don't. is fair. I liked math. I liked that. Until, until it got too hard to understand. Yeah. Until mm-hmm. junior year, algebra two is where I fell off. I was in a really... Bad car wreck. Yeah, yeah, that was time to pack up and go. go. Yep. I mean, this was the sense that I got from watching this with the two of you last week. I knew we were on the same page, and that's why we called in an expert. We sent it to Intertech Laboratories. Okay. You guys? Mm. This gentleman boasts a career in mathematics and education spanning more than a decade. It took me over 10 long years 
to invent a fryer. Including his current role as a member of Duxbury High School's math faculty, whose student body boasts the 31st ranked math and reading proficiency in all of Massachusetts. Not too bad. According to U.S. News and World Report. Sure. That's out of 348 schools, which puts them in the top. Nine percent. Nine percent. There he is. See, that's why he's here. Nine percent. <laughs> Dave. Shut up, Dave. For, <laughs> for us math magicians out there. And he is also the 2004 Massachusetts State Trigonometry Champion. International boxing champ, cover girl, and His mom. students know him as Mr. Chivers. A few will call him Jared. Out of reflex, we will almost certainly exclusively call him Chiv the rest of the way. Mr. Jared Chivers, officially, formally, welcome to Call Now. Yes, thank you. This is a huge opportunity for me to expand my horizons. I'm ready. I hope you are. So we asked you to watch the human calculator. Unlock the human calculator. Which, it's an interesting product? Can you call it a product? System. You got a system to I got a system. I don't know. The first thing I was thinking in rewatching it was like, it feels like he's just a math teacher with a slightly different point of view, or maybe he's just a good math teacher. Is that an oversimplification of what Scott Flansburg brings to the table? Just keep an open mind. Or is he truly a human calculator and an innovator from what you know as someone who literally does this every day? That's all I do. I feel like everybody has their own way to do things, you know, and he has his way. And it might work for a lot of people. Thousands. Thousands of students all across America. But Thousands. Millions. 5.83 million. Right. Right. Million. Exactly. 11 million. We're up to millions? I didn't check <laughs> the count today. <laughs> there are a million of those cassettes out there somewhere. Take a look through them. But yeah, it's just one of those, like, we had a, a little thing a couple years ago, like, just a simple math problem. And we asked, like, 20 people how they solved it. And there were, like, 10 different ways to do it. And everybody swore that their way was the perfect way, you know? So it's like everybody makes sense in their own way, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, math feels like the one subject where despite having concrete answers, it does come down to the individual for what process you can take to get there, mm -hmm. which yeah. is very counter, I think, the way that it was taught because it was always taught very linearly. If this is how you have to do it, show your work. Look at that muscle work. If the work you show doesn't reflect the way we taught you to show your work, you're not doing it right. Can I goof it up on television? But yeah. me, as someone who is a lifelong not slacker, yes, you are. not procrastinator, <laughs> yes, you are. seeker of efficiency. That's right. Yes, mm -hmm. perfect. If I get the right answer, why does it matter if I'm just good at targeted guessing? It smells so yeah. good in here. I guess the word got out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm yeah. still right. All right, Dan. I never liked being put in a box if I had to do it their way. Absolutely no way. Which is probably why, again, I took one math class after the age of 15. 64. That's really why I didn't like math until I got to college. We asked the leading university. So when you talk about really being strong in terms of computational skills, which is what that whole thing was about, that's not really math, you know? So then... People yeah. confuse the computational skills as being good at math. And then the actual math comes and they're like, like you, you told me I was good. What's going on? I <laughs> yeah. feel like that's why a lot of people don't like math because they're yeah. told they're good because they can add fast, but that's not math. You know? Nothing is ever as simple as it sounds, isn't yeah. it? It was me. I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. <laughs> I was never told I was good though. Oh gosh. And oh. I still don't like it. That was me. People just like you. I didn't like high school math. And then I got to college and, drinks. and they were very much more open, kind of what you were saying. They're like, mm. as long as you get the right answer, you know, there, it was a lot more philosophy based. Yeah. But that's when it gets really interesting, I feel. So a lot of people kind of miss that, which is kind of sad. Oh, no, don't remind me. It makes me feel really bad. Yeah. That's going into a deeper thing. I always thought that geometry was such a great sum of your computational skills. You know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, you're seeing right. in real time you know, designs and things that can be made like off a grid. And you're like, oh, I, I, I kind of get it. Oh, you're getting the hang of and it. And then once you go further, farther. I lost the visual. I noticed you're squinting too. You know what I mean? Like right. I would yeah. lose the visual of like, what did, I don't know, trig is like physics. I don't get it. You get to see the app. You know, it's fast. Yeah. It's a train. Yeah. I lost it. Geometry is fun to teach because you can actually show what you're doing. Take a look at some of these charts. And then I've taught pre-calculus and calculus the last eight years. And the first day, I'm just like, in pre-calculus, I'm just like, you're probably never going to see this again. It's not the most useful thing in the world. 
Let's just try to get through this. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like it's, it's just one of those things where if you get it good, but if you don't, there's so much more to math out there that you should just kind of keep on going and see what happens. Like calculus to me was, was when I actually liked math. It was just very useful. You should be a math teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I had a very good math professor, which is that's the key, I think. Yeah. The, the teacher is key. Yeah. Nice. So you had Scott Flansburg? Yes, Scott Flansburg. Exactly. Oh. So how long did you work with Mr. Flansburg? <laughs> Let me shoot this in. Let me shoot in my English major thing. It is so nice to hear you cheering for what I just said. That's no different than like Oh Jesus. Here we go again. It's fucking than like Moby Dick, oh. though. You know what I mean? Where it's like nobody should just pick up Moby Dick and read it. Take a look. Right here. Right. Like, you should be like, listen, this is right. not what you guys want to read. I did not want to hurt myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, it's very complex, and let's get through it together. Dry and wet together. Oh, I can oh. do them both. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, you yeah. lose that. You never lose power, and you never lose suction. I'm going to use that, yeah. Dave. Do it. That's a very good example. Do it. Do it. And I think for the same reasons I was not good in literature classes is the same reasons I was not good in math. Oh, gosh. Is because I've been described as a rebar thinker. I'm cutting metal. I see straight lines. Keep your back straight. And if it's a line that I can navigate, I can run it down forever and it'll always repeat. I'm never going to have an issue with it. I'll always make the connections. This is a unit that if you have it, you will use it. But straight lines and clear intersections. I was in a really... Bad car wreck. And things like that require things that fill in all the space between all the rebar. It doesn't take up a lot of space. All that mm-hmm. poured concrete. Sloppy nacho poured. Where you have to be able to associate one thing to the next, understand that what's being presented to you is not what you're supposed to get out it's of it. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a f- fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. Where I'm like, but that's what I got out of it. And they're like, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, you're like a rook. I'm like, you're mm-hmm. doing it wrong. I hate cursive and I hate all of you. Yeah, you can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> that's very unhealthy. Well, it's a lot more than about being fat. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like, oh, then I quit. I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. <laughs> right. No. One of the things that I was thinking about through the video, the more important part of math, you just need to give them space to figure it out themselves i'm not gonna do it you do it that's really the biggest thing there's no reason to force any mechanic i mean in some situations it's kind of important no that's very important to do but at the end of the day math is changing so much now take a look at some of these charts everybody's got their smartphone now so now it's more can you use interactive software to kind of gain a better understanding of math skills and Mm -hmm. a lot quicker it's a lot more in depth yeah it makes it more interesting but did you think that some of the kids on the show were like they had smart kids answering those questions ah that is very sneaky <laughs> or they had people that were you know they might not have been doing right. the exact method that he had yeah you know what I, mean? I was like yeah. these kids are probably yeah. just quick all right carly your problem is 93 squared 8,649. There's plenty of holes you can poke through the people doing math on hand there. It only took them getting the sheet of, right, here's the math problems you're going to get. Like, all right, yeah. cool. Right. I was in one of those classes, but the camera didn't go all the way to the back of the room. Back and to the left. <laughs> <laughs> 87. Like, can, you, can you keep him quiet? God, yeah. said I think he has an attention yeah. deficit issue. You're like, what? I'm empty in my pockets. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, me and Mark right. are like playing catch in the back. Yeah. yeah. Paper football. <laughs> or like I'm laying on the You're floor. Like, I can't wait to talk to Dave about the movie House at lunch. <laughs> Sandy. <Yeah. laughs> I can't wait to draw something about House and then show it to Dave walking by his <laughs> class and try to disrupt that class after getting thrown out of my class for disrupting it. Heart of gold, though. It's a <laughs> <laughs> Public school. Yeah. All right. So just swinging back to the human calculator itself in this infomercial, it's interesting. I said, quote, product because it's a learning slash self-improvement system. With my oil cleaning filtering system. That they're selling. And it's not the mm-hmm. only system of its kind that Amazing Discoveries has hawked. I mean, that was a big turkey, and man. one day, obviously, our canon and Amazing Discoveries will overlap again. And they also had an infomercial for Alphanetics. Coming up next on Amazing Discoveries, we'll show you how to read 5, even 20 times faster and increase your comprehension with a powerful new speed reading system called Alphanetics. The speed reading system. Mm-hmm. So they'll hawk anything. I think Levy's threshold <laughs> is probably a little lower than we initially expected. To develop a strong and symmetrical lower body. But it's still interesting that that's an infomercial thing because you guys can correct me if I'm wrong or if you've seen anything outside of 
what we've covered. All right, Dan. And we always talk about systems. System? With its own dust removal system. But this is the first, like, only system that we've seen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Or Tybo. Yeah. Tybo. Right? That's a system. That's the whole system. But that's so much more relevant as That's a much more instructive. I'd like you to stand right in here. Like he's bringing you step by step. In just two steps. Yeah, aerobics. This is like, all right. Yeah. Trick your brain to do the math. You're like, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> right. If he stood in front of a classroom and like Billy blanked a method, that would Oh yeah. You know what I just mean? audio cassettes. He's yeah. like, punch more. Really like to tell people the truth. Yeah. Dance more. <laughs> but punch you know and I... dance more. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's the closest thing I can think of. Yeah. Just like, we're not selling you anything. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not even selling you the snake oil. We're selling you a tape recording of a guy extracting snake oil. And now you can make your own mm -hmm. snake oil. We're going to build a wall. Contact body blast, yeah. kind of. I mean, that's why he had to bring in the business guys, yeah. though, you know? Yeah. Oh, they had some businessy business boys. Now, what are you in the accounting department or something? You're going to make a lot of money now. I've been a rich man. Because yeah. you're good yeah. at math, you know? Yeah. 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 He kind of needed that. He yeah. owned a couple businesses. Someday you want to own your own company, right? Yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can find 8% real quick. Yeah. Is that not knowing math could limit the money you will make? It can limit how much money you can make. They said right. that like two or three times. There's no limit to what we can do. Yeah. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. Is it true, Jared? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it's it? A, hey, you know? Proof is in the pudding, you know, I mean, this beautiful house I got here. This is a beautiful porter house. But well, let's just talk about Scott Flansburg a little bit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. beefcake. I want to look like that guy. Ooh, hot yeah. dog. Pretty catchy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Blinding. this episode of Amazing Discoveries aired in 1990, and Scott's bio also picks up in 1990. With since about 1990, Flansburg has regularly given lectures and presentations at schools. He's a teacher. <laughs> He's been a presenter <laughs> at organizations such as NASA, IBM, the Smithsonian Institute, and the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, and the Mental Calculation World Cup, Cup, Cup. The <laughs> latter described Flansburg as more an auditory than a visual mental calculator. Take a look at some of these charts. I don't know what that means. Take a look. Right here. But, okay. Me neither. Um, and with over yeah. 20 years of educating people of all ages throughout the world, Scott Flansburg knows what it takes to turn kids and adults of any age into a Cuban calculator registered trademark. His revolutionary techniques to unlocking the secret to numbers and proven to improve your mental calculation skills, just as any of the thousands of students he successfully taught. Thousands and thousands. Mark, you should email them to update their website. You've got me. As an experienced mm -hmm. edutainer. Stop. Mm -hmm. And World Math Day Ambassador Scott tours the world with the mission to inspire kids to learn his original way to think about math. Mm. But, Jerry, do you think this is... Like you said before, it's not revolutionary, right? Or is it only revolutionary in the sense that he put it on tapes instead of just teaching one classroom at a time? So we took our camera crew and visited Choya Junior High School. That feels like the innovation, right? I would say so. Considering it's early 90s and, you know, oh, yeah. kind of all that technology is starting to build. I feel like he tapped into that pretty good. Just take a look on the internet. Instead of just like standing in front of a room and talking to people, he could throw it out to millions of people real people just like you but yeah. the ultimate goal is just to be catchy you know finally starting to catch on you gotta be catchy you gotta be an edutainer right. you know what this one got me thinking though you gonna tell us? that amazing discoveries requires them to pay them to be on it oh yeah oh, yeah. yeah that has to be right that's right and they're probably not seeking them out it's the exact opposite who's gonna pay the most well I think it's probably more so amazing discoveries. One of the great things about it is it has kind of the false illusion of it being like game show, a or, game show or a talk show, Mike Levy's dream. Yeah. But it, mm -hmm. I am certain based on the legal documents for some of the lawsuits they've had to pay up in. What does an attorney need with math? Is that they approach it very similar to Stan Dad. in that people come to them with products and if they like it, they will stake it and they'll put their name behind it and then they will get a cut on the way back in. I'm going to cut this hammer up. Which is why for things like the magic wand, which again, we'll cover in the future. It works like magic. That was the hand mixer that Stan Jacobs referenced that they juiced the horsepower for on set. So then they had to pay out like 275 grand or something because of a, an FTC 
claim against them. But I'm a commercial but, litigator. But so like they have a vested interest in these things. They're not just this amazing platform. I have the scaffolding set up. All right. So let's okay. let's take a short walk over to our product overview. <laughs> For this week, which I think we might set the record for in terms of length of time. Got a long show, folks. It is Scott's human calculator system comprised of four audio cassettes and the <laughs> step by step instruction manual. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. That's what it is. I want it. I really want to eat it. I would have loved to see the manual. That's why they didn't show it. I know. I, I want to see yeah. something. They didn't show it because they want you to buy it. Yeah. They want you to think that even if you don't believe in it, yeah. you got to buy it ironically. Jared. Right. This is worth an ironic buy or for you. Or maybe a gift for a friend of the pod. Oh, yeah. Gift gift for the friend. Cheers. As someone who's kind of um, an idiot, what is um, <laughs> new math? What is new <laughs> math? No, me. Uh, Dave's calling himself an idiot. I thought he was burning Jiv then asking a question. Like, Jesus, yeah, I thought so too. Like, no. Jesus, Dave, pace yourself. <laughs> no, we, I'm calling we myself. We haven't gotten to your segment yet. <laughs> <laughs> what is, I know this is a little side track, but what is new math? And you? I don't know. Like new metal? No, they call it new math. Was that in the video or just in general? I think that's a joke our parents make. No, oh. new math is a thing. Is this new math? I don't know what to say, really. Uh, Elon I Musk is he... doing new math. <laughs> One time I smoked uh, weed on Joe Rogan's podcast. No, I mean, I don't know if there's a like a slogan or like a product or something of new math, but I think every five years math changes, especially now with the technology. Uh, we kind of have to keep up the whole MCAS and everything like that. You're allowed to use computers now because all the kids use computers. Computer load up celery, man, please. Yeah, um, kids these days. <laughs> so it's just the way that it's being taught in elementary school is different now. It was actually kind of talked about in that video, I guess. So instead of doing like the ones column and then carry and then do the tens column and then carry, they kind of do more grouping. That's yeah. how I count my golf score. All those sevens and eights exactly. make 15s. Yep. That's easy. God. <laughs> that's how I tally my groceries wow. now, too. How many times have you gone to the market and you filled up the basket and you've taken it to the cash register and you never knew how much money you spent until you got there? I mean, it's, it's logical. Yeah. But it also comes and goes, like things that were useful a couple years ago. Now, get ready to meet Eric Thies as an acclaimed chef, culinary expert, and former restaurant owner. They might change it now, and then a couple years from now, they'll be like, oh, let's go back to this because that was useful. Like, it kind of comes and goes. Yeah. yeah. It challenges yeah. itself. What's wrong, Eli? It's kind of cyclical, really, right? Then we have our superheated cyclonic air cycling. Yeah. As a whole, math is more collaborative now, more technology-driven. The first major advancement in vacuum technology in 50 years. Computer science and math have really kind of squeezed together. It's encouraging. It is, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Kind of the way technology is going now, it's just like the math and the technology are, are kind of driving each other. So it's, I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's good. So you would agree, Broadway Joe, right? The what, what? Joe New Math? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Man, I want to kiss you. I want to add you. I couldn't care less about the team struggling. I want to subtract <laughs> you. Mark, watching you chomp at the bit to get that in was so great. I thought <laughs> you were going to... a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were getting ready to do the read for, for New Math, the Wikipedia entry, but you were just waiting for your fucking Broadway Joe Hammer. <laughs> so, Great job by you. If he was on that infomercial. Oh, man. That would have been great if he was on the infomercial and they got him mm -hmm. to do the math. And then he kissed Scott at the end. Because <laughs> he did have the same haircut as Susie Colbert. Nice job by him. But yes. so the internet defines new math as the dramatic change in the way mathematics was taught in American grade schools and to a lesser extent in European countries and elsewhere during the 1950s to the 1970s. Curriculum Ooh, topics okay. and teaching practices were changed in the U.S. shortly after the Sputnik crisis. What the Sputnik does. Shout out episodes Ooh. 34 and 35. 64. The goal was to boost student <laughs> science education and mathematical skill to meet the technological threat of Soviet engineers repeatedly <laughs> highly skilled mathematicians. Have you ever seen a commie drink a glass of water? It always comes back to the Cold yeah, War. I'm it's them. always the Cold uh -huh. War did it. I'm Dave, you, uh -huh. you are so deeply in the Cold War <laughs> that you subliminally mm. brought up a Cold War topic. Topic. So, yeah. congratulations. I mean, that's not easy to do. I <laughs> thought I had an inroad to the Cold War, spoiler alert, a little bit later in the program, but I'm glad you brought us there because that's where we belong. 
now more than underrated ever. war. Yes, very <laughs> underrated <laughs> war. All right, welcome back to our newest segment called Underrated War. <laughs> we just rate wars. <laughs> what do you see about Korea? Uh, <laughs> it's very complicated. <laughs> Wait, which one? <laughs> Both Korea. Sound like Ann Jacobson. Global affairs. You know. It is so nice. To hear you cheering yeah. for what I just All said. Hey, Dan, when you mentioned Scott popping up for the first time in like 1990, Peek-a-boo. I started thinking, I was like, where was he before this? Where do you see this? I did some research. Can I show you something? And he wasn't in the Cold War, but it just mm, it, wasn't he though? lined up, man. Wasn't he though? Draw your own conclusions. Watch. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> he was searching for sugar, man. Oh, thanks, Kimberly. <laughs> Flansburg. That's not a real Fucking name. Flansburg. He was in a forward area. I'm sure of it. <laughs> we go out to the mountains in the, in the fall in Virginia. So, I mean, this one, it got weird early. That's a good point, sir. When Scott Flansburg decided to delegate teaching the audience members how to do math. I'm not going to do it. You do it. So basically, we need to talk about Kevin. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe before we open that conversation, we should take a deep breath and just ask ourselves, why? Religion, greed, money, sex. But why? 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 As always, it's easy to dismiss this stuff as a joke, but we have to consider the whys of each show, and there are a lot of them. Amazing Discoveries continues to impress on a production level. I think I'm going to kind of be in the minority here, but Mike's storytelling abilities still impress me. In particular, his pacing is really, really well done. I think it's particularly interesting that although... This is a gimmick product, like they all are. He still managed to make enough creative decisions to make it entertaining. Just to make it interesting, we've enlisted the help of Ray Gaten. Now, Ray Gaten is a certified public accountant. With the cutaways to the kids in the office. So we took our camera crew and visited Choya Junior High School. Or wherever the hell they were. Phoenix, Arizona. I'm sure most pitchmen would have preferred to stay in a wheelhouse of kitchen product. Cooking system. Cleaning product. Hi, Billy Mays here for OxyClean. Et cetera. That's right. And I think Mike brings the same energy and enthusiasm to this little three ring circus he has in Burbank. I can handle that. Hats off to him. I think he took a product that everyone on his staff was like, Jesus, we have to do that. I'd like you to stand right in here. And he's like, I think we can do it. We even have a London taxi cab to make it more fun. You know, and. And that's what I like about this. I like that. I don't like math. Do you yeah. like math? How many people in today's studio audience have been frustrated or intimidated by math? They're like, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I've always, I'm always fancy my... Shut up. Nobody Ooh. likes math. Yeah, yeah. Math sucks. I'm Let's have fun with it. Yeah. However, <laughs> on the first watch, I kind of thought it was, uh, I guess, not altruistic, but maybe like, oh, it's an educational one. America's educational system is falling apart. Second time around, I found it a bit more sleazy than the first. Anybody want to try to butt thigh door? I don't know much, but I do know that they seem to offer really easier problems for the kids. 670 plus three. I can't imagine that all the parents or grandparents that bought this product got anything out of it. You've got a dust extractor. It seems pretty obvious that although it may work, you would still need a curiosity in the subject. Let me ask you uh, a personal question. To get you over the hump, you'd probably need to be pretty smart. Hey, Sarge. But yeah. what the hell do I know? Let's ask the math teacher, is this a gimmick? And does that matter? I mean, do you encourage gimmicks? Are there gimmicks that work? What do you think, Chip? I feel like a lot of math is confident. My chest looks better. And he definitely exudes confidence. Mike, I told you and I've shown you. My program gives you the keys to unlock the human calculator that's inside all of us. When he solves a problem or when somebody he you know, shows is able to solve the problem. 684. 684, and that's the right answer. You can kind of see them... You know, they're very up. They're like, oh, I did it. Yes. There's also a bell and a green light. Bing! For every correct answer, you're going to hear this sound. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yep. Competitive. Yep. An accounting firm. Accounting firm, panel crew, Forrester. Yep. Yeah. You can yeah. see it. Yep, exactly. I mean, that's another huge thing in math. That was one reason why I enjoyed it in an earlier age, because we always did like the flashcards and I was always the fastest one to get it. So fast. Those two things combined, you get the question right quickly. It gains your confidence. Like they give up on themselves. They have no self-esteem. So then you move on to the next thing. I got to show you this other product okay. over here. And then all of a sudden you're showing off to your friend. If you That's promise to tell a friend about you're it. You're showing off to, you probation know. Probation officer. <laughs> Louise Rubanen, you're a juvenile probation officer. This one's not a middle of the road. This is like, it's got like Guinness Book of World Records written all over it, right? Yeah. I think it even has it for like him solving some of these like 
mental calculations faster than everybody else. A while back, Scott Schlansberg appeared on Gary Collins' home show. Like, this is hitting the longest grand slam as you can. Chicks dig the long ball. And it's probably going to only work with, like, the uber confident. Let's look at Linda here. Yeah. The uber yeah. willing to learn something brand new. I'm currently the reigning new Miss Latina International. Wow, fantastic. It's a big-ass swing. Yeah. Yeah. So, one... I wish they showed some B-roll of Scott in competition. Go! Like, yeah. I think that would have oh, been yeah. awesome. Yeah. And it's like through the tiny TV into there. Even if it's a fake competition, I would have loved that. Yeah. Yeah. Like him or Jake Paul. Yeah. Or something. Yes. And they did a little <laughs> bit, Dan. They did it a little bit where he was like, at the beginning, the, here's a problem. And he does that crazy brain move and he's like 600, 344. 17,395. You know? <laughs> you're like that. So what do you have it written on the back of your eyelids? Yeah. <laughs> I, I blacked out for a second. <laughs> but it's like Jim was saying, it was like, it's kind of fun to watch someone be like, oh shit, he got there that but, fast. Yeah. So that part was good. I agree. I think they should have done more of that. What is 497 times uh, 35? I'm very curious how he closed the cassette, <laughs> you know, as in like, all right, this is the end of the cool match. We'll see you next time on Home Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm very curious how that would close. Get out there and start yeah. fucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like it's awkward. What are you listening to? It's gonna be hard to finish a novel. Yeah. It's cool for the first couple, and then it kind of gets a little bit more boring. Are you sick and tired of boring lookalike exercise videos? I'm sure after a little while, it's like, oh, this is a cool trick, and then this cool trick, and then there's probably like a thousand of those. Remember when we were in Venice Beach? But yeah. then after a while, it's just <laughs> like it's white noise. It's, right. Like it's not really cool anymore. <laughs> it doesn't really apply to yeah. algebra. I don't think so, Tim. Which is the next step. Like, do you have any cool algebra stuff? I said no. Yeah. yeah. And he'd be like, no. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. So, what, like, what was the point of that? It's not like something else as well, actually. Yeah. Next year I will. But and yeah. like, what if, and no. it's like, well, what if there's a nine in the problem? You know what I mean? It was like, if there's a five, right. this works great. It was like, yeah. like it's a trick. The answer always ends in 25. Mm -hmm. I remember those tricks, but they were additional. Yeah. You know, this is right. not course stuff mm -hmm. here. Yeah. That's part of the thing. There's a lot of tricks with the correct setup that look cool. You owe me for this, Coolio. But there's probably like 8,000 tricks 18. that you need to know those tricks. <laughs> That's it. And instead, it's just like, why don't you just do it this way? Can I show you something here? That's the same every single time. It might take like five more seconds, but yeah, yeah. it's a little bit more useful. I'm so yeah. linear. That's where my head goes. I'm like, why don't I just stack all the numbers and I'll get to you later? <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's what I would do. Right. That's where the competition comes in. Yeah. yeah. And I Chiv, lose. Yeah. yeah. The one word that you've mentioned a few times, Chiv, that they should have mentioned in the show is computation. Not computing. I couldn't think of it because, again, I'm, I'm dumb. But <laughs> that is like, it's not teaching you math <laughs> skills. Right. It's teaching you arithmetic. It's teaching you computation to just say, okay, you can crunch numbers quickly. So it's like, honestly... I feel like they should have been beating the accounting drum a little bit harder. Now, what are you in the accounting department or something? Yeah. Because the only CPA yeah. we met was the man with the bell who mm -hmm. I don't think spoke. No. <laughs> just he just yelled there. at us. Ding. Did he have a name? Or uh, did he have a face? Was, I didn't see his face. Either. Ray Gate yeah. from, mm -hmm. what was it? Penel Kerr. And uh, some other partner. They're doing great. With the help of Ray Gaten. Now, Ray Gaten is a certified public accountant. Really exciting guy. They're a, Yeah. That oh, guy. Ray Gay from Penel Kerr? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. From, from PKT? PK. He was up there with Jackie's yep. sister's brother's boy. And over here, my cousin Arnold. Hey, oh, uh, <laughs> what, what are we doing it? From <laughs> PKF, Penel Kerr Forrester. Classic. <laughs> <All> right, great. <laughs> yeah, so they should have focused more on the accounting side of it, because mm -hmm. that is like the... But 99% of people thing. think that that's math. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, sir. Okay. And I feel like most of the people who would buy that product are like the parents who buy it for their kids. Especially if you have children. And they're like, yeah. oh. You got to be really good at this, so then you're good at math. It's not that hard. Yeah. This is math. Yeah. And that point, combined with what Dave said before about this as a gift. All your gift shopping, right. any holiday, uh -huh. with one toll-free call. Can you imagine Rip. unwrapping this <laughs> on Christmas morning and just looking around the room and being like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, seriously? One of this is Doubtfire. <laughs> and now I got this. Hey, my mom thinks I'm an idiot. Hey, oh, cool. <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm glad you got my report card. I know I don't study. You think this is going to help? If you're a parent or a grandparent who's frustrated because you can't help your children master math. You think I'm not going to push back immediately against this? We're sort of pushing that fountain pen along. And yeah. Good try. Okay.
Yeah. Like, yeah, no. I, I thought this was a used golden eye I asked for because it was on sale for four dollars. I couldn't get that. You spent fifty dollars on this? Fifty dollars. For only forty nine ninety five. You could have got me a used Sega for that. Ridiculous. The waste of money, man. Yeah, and correction, nobody ever returned golden eye. That's a good point, sir. That's a great point. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. bought all my games secondhand. Oh, okay. All right. I was yeah. real shyster. I've been a rich man. You know? Slappers only. No, I was an efficiency uh, enthusiast. That's what I was. <laughs> all right, Daniel. But, System, you got a system for getting golden eye? Fucking system. Yeah. So, Dave, did you have any thoughts about that? <laughs> which thing? I understand it's so easy. A child can do it. It's difficult to what you did right now. But mm. having Kevin sneak in the back with the people. Okay, bring out Scott's friend. Kevin, come on out. And then just show mm. the cutaway to them is just like, there's hanging out chilling. Let's check in backstage and see how Kevin's doing teaching Scott's methods to our backstage challengers. Kevin, you're playing around. Really? Why are you playing now? I feel like they missed the one cutaway in the middle, maybe, where Kevin's like, all right, guys, this is all the shit that we're doing. And then they cut back, and they're like, all right, we're done. And that'll be done. Yeah. They just went right back, he's like, yeah, where's fucking And around? it don't matter. None of this matters. Like, we didn't teach these people. They don't need to know. It shows the limits of what Amazing Discoveries can do, which is, it's an infomercial. You want a silly product, and it's going to be better. It's better? You know what I mean? You need that to push it over the top. If you're vertically challenged. I think they bit off yeah. more than they can chew a little bit. I know you're dying for a piece of this. I thought Kevin was great, though, by the way. He's the case. Yeah, hilarious. But I don't think there's really that much more cutaways <laughs> Then another amazing discoveries. We could break it down by minute on some other podcast. You're not uh, the bell. But okay. um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is what you're saying. You don't get the system. The complete 17 piece system. You don't get the system. visual of what the system is. And speaking of clarity, but that makes the cutaways more exciting and fun. I think that's the problem. Yeah, you don't get like a structured. If you follow A, B, C, and D, you can do multiplication in two minutes. Yeah. If they did all that, then Scott wouldn't be making that 50 bucks a whack at it, you know? Oh, yeah. also, so. the reason why, you know, we got 1990 here, guys. What an uppercut by Douglas. Tyson. Down goes Tyson. The economy's booming. Prices shot up almost as soon as the first Iraqi tanks began to roll. We won the Cold War. How would people are ready for democracy? <laughs> be a lawyer. A commercial litigator. Be an accountant. Now, what are you in the accounting department or something? Be whatever you want. Be yeah. It's not about an associate's degree here, guys. This is about like, Great call. No. this is about getting straight to the top. This is when space camp was huge too, you know, talking about space. If you answer the next question, Amazing Discoveries is going to send you to space camp on us. It was, yeah. But next space camp starring Joaquin Phoenix. Right. Yeah. An impossible mistake. Launch them into space. The adventure of their lives will be getting back home. Space camp. <laughs> this is also like, Hey, learn to be that guy that is in front of the CEO at a business meeting. You're an asshole, but you're just faster at doing math in front of people. Yeah. yeah. Take your time. Be that guy. Yeah. I want to look like that guy. So I have one more question because you mentioned like the seriousness ish of it. America's educational system is falling apart. And it went straight after school special when they brought mm -hmm. out Bobby. I want you to hear a very emotional story. Yeah. And they let off with. Louise Robotten. Louise Robotten. Mm -hmm. Juvenile probation officer. You're a juvenile yeah. probation officer. Slide down the line, skip past a lady, go right to Bobby Huron, who uses Scott's methods and turned his life around? Yes, Mike, I really hated math. Does math or something? Mom, that's got to make you feel very proud. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then he did 12 times 26. How much is uh, the 22 times 12? Yeah. Which is, yes. as Dave said, it's pretty easy. 264. It's an easy one. But... <laughs> Dan, <laughs> I got to stop you because that's the error. Hold it, Ron. In this one, there is an error because it's Amazing Discoveries. The following special program, Amazing Discoveries. That should be a cutaway sentimental segment. Believe you've got some very pressing problems. They should have been like mm. at his house. He should have like cried, cut to like him being like overjoyed. I'm pretty excited about it. Should have been scared straight. Yeah. With his Just, friends. Yeah. Uh, Dave, do you see Mike on the couch in his sweater? Maybe like not as colorful sweater. He went to a school. Across two shots. Bring him to the school set. Yeah. He can go to like Bring the, the special ed room. He was like, I had to take all these special ed classes. You know, it's 1990. 73 UNLV. You can do that. I literally did that. Except don't do a one shot again because he got way too close to those kids. <laughs> So funny. That was really in crazy. the classroom. <laughs> you needed two cameras. Well, I, on the I'm side. sure they were cramped. That must have been it. But it still looks mm -hmm. so. They're in the portables. <laughs> looks so weird. <laughs> like, like, can we put a camera in here? Sure, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Hey, do you have well, a guest pass? Smell. He's like, a what? 
Yeah, let's bring the camera. <laughs> I'm Mike Levy. Who? You can do it. Anybody can do it. <laughs> I like that. Like, Aren't you kids awake at two in the morning on Saturday night? He's like, we're filming kids all day. <laughs> oh, I like soccer. Calm down, Greg. It's soccer. Yeah, I'm just going to pack my things and go to the Ronnie's and hopefully you guys will join me. I'll see, hey. you, there. see you there. We all know infomercials love to claim that the products they're pitching are award winning. But let's not forget that they wouldn't have any of those imaginary awards without the hard work of the stars of these infomercials, and that's why each week, the boys hand out the Ronnies, their acknowledgement of the greatest moments of these informative and supposedly objective works of art. They're named in honor of the godfather and patron saint of TV pitchmen, me, Ron Popeil. Well, in a normal week, we would have a normal Ronnies, mm-hmm. but I think we've established some ground rules when we have an expert in the house, so the three of us will as we typically do, debate our categories and try to discuss our potential award winners. And then I, instead of as I would normally do as an elected delegate of the Ryan's committee, be burdened with determining which nominee takes home the hardware. Again, we're lucky enough to have an expert in the house. And this week, Dr. Jerry James Chivers, you will have the autonomy to decide who each Ronnie category winner is. Sound agreeable? You good? I get it. Let's do it. Okay. So our first category is... The Lynn Gerhardt There's a treasure underneath. Award for Best Value Proposition. Our nominees are, it's easy. This program is so easy. It's so easy, a child can do it. I couldn't believe how easy Scott's methods were. It's so easy, Kevin will take you in the back room and teach you himself, huh? <laughs> no? Uh, all right, well, <laughs> hey, Tim, huh? mark that. We use that. <laughs> it's fast. We're going to see how fast Zach can do it in his head. The speed is that you can do math fast in your head. Then Mike Levy can do the calculator. It takes me longer to put in the calculator. To some degrees, he tried to make it seem like it was fun. Get the problems right in my head, which made it a lot more fun for or me. Or if not fun, <laughs> you will no longer hate it because you won't be so terrible at it that it's embarrassing. You hated math? So, you know, and you can also amaze your friends by telling them the day of the week they were born. You can amaze your friends by telling them the day of the week they were born on in just seconds. Mm. Man, if I, if I had a nickel for every time someone said, hey... What day of the week was I born? And I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know anybody that would want to do I'd that. still be looking for a nickel. I was born on a Friday, just so you know. Thank you. See, Jared knows. That one's really easy, just so you know. <gasps> I don't oh. know it offhand, oh. but I know that it's really easy. That's very, very easy. <laughs> I mean, you got a one in seven shot, right? That's right. So what's that? What's the percentage on that, Jared? I still don't get Less it. Less than 15%? Yeah. Uh, 14%, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, you know. Somewhere around there. That works. Can you see that working? 14.28571. Whoa. Oh, yeah, regular Scott Flansburg check, over check here. That. Come on, guys. Jared, I don't mean to offend you here, but. Here's the personal question. I don't give a shit what day of the week I was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a funny side story. Dan was the one who taught me that one seventh is a repeating decimal in seventh grade. Take that for data. <laughs> see? Thank you, Tim. Tim Apple. He did the long division on the board. I remember that vividly. What, what are we talking here? Like 1.223? We talking something like that? You know what guys is? <laughs> no, round down. I said no. Oh. Ray John, round down? <laughs> oh, I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah, I think that was Mr. Katie punishing me by giving me a repeating decimal and making me do it on the board until I would stop or not no you were the only one who knew that it was repeating mm. and then he asked you to show it and you you were very happy to i remember i love being right can i show you something here? Well, yeah. wait what was the day of the week that happened? <laughs> yeah, what day of the week was that definitely it was a tuesday it wasn't a saturday or a sunday <laughs> Not summer school. odds are going up <laughs> okay we have we have an official bet. and listen in our last nominee is that you support the military industrial educational complex. Uh-huh. You can catch up to Japan and the smarter kids they're producing. How other countries like Japan are producing smarter kids. And taking over great math jobs. So, USA. Are we better? USA. Yes, yes, you are. I know we weren't head to head with Japan, but we won the Cold War. Japan's so. an interesting. Yeah, yeah he went right anyway. at Japan there. Right at it. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I wonder if he had multiple takes where he said Russia. You just said it's not Russia. China. I have to have my China. Japan. The history of Japan. And they're like, you said Japan with the most conviction. Let's let's go with that. He's like, also in this market, the one we watched, they're like, oh, this market, <laughs> Japan, a little better than Russia. I mean, Black Rain had just come <laughs> out. From the back alleys of Manhattan. <laughs> Michael Douglas, look it up. To the streets <laughs> of Japan. I like the military industrial educational complex. Like, I would love to think that the reason that I would either buy this for a child, niece, nephew, or cousin, or that someone in my family would buy this. Would be like they would give me this, and then in the card, write like "We're gonna catch Japan together, brother." And be like, "Yeah, 
with this? <laughs> this they're like, yeah. Congratulations. Welcome to the front. See, there's a war going on here. I don't. What? What What are we doing here? What are you doing here? I think that's where I'm leaning. Your back straight. I like that he started with that, too. I like that. He came right out of the gate. Firing a shot over the bow at Japan. <laughs> Japan's killing us. <laughs> Japan's eating our lunch. <laughs> Not Massachusetts, though. If Massachusetts were a country, we'd be number one. 1101. Whoa. I bet you didn't know that. Whoa. I like facts like yeah. that. Let's secede. Small fun fact. Let's yeah. secede. Let's do it. Exactly. Why did yeah. I get left yep. behind? What the fuck? Oh, gosh. <laughs> no Dave left behind. <laughs> no child left behind. Yep. NCLB wasn't done till we were out. Right. Sorry. Thank you for your out. You got to trick Dave, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I guess that is fine. Yeah. Trick Dave. Yeah. Trick Dave. Yeah. Bones. Excuse me. Call me Bones. <laughs> Excuse me, Bones. <laughs> Dan, I like that. I like that. <laughs> but I, I can't go with it because it's not who this is for. And we already won the Cold War, mm. right? So it's already... Yeah. If this was an ultra competitive <laughs> thing where it was like, your kid's going to be the best of the best of the best. Your life's going to be better. Then I think that yeah. would work. But I don't think this infomercial is aimed at that. I'm going with fast. Everyone was so impressed with how fast Carla got the answer. Because, <gasps> because I was always in the back of the room. Uh, and to the left. And I was like, I could never do the fast problem. And that fast. So that's why I would pick it. It's personal for me. I thought we were done with the personal question. Well, you know. If I could do Oof. calculations oh. fast, I think I could put that little feather in my cap. The apple bird. And be like, yeah. boom, I got the answer to that. Answer to your prayers. Because nothing else compares. Yeah. So mm. this was like my peak math, mm. like speed arithmetic. Speed front. I like fast and I like military industrial education. <laughs> Like them both. Dry and wet together. Oh, I can oh. do them both. Have a little fun with this it. This is fun. You want to try the paint Come stick? On. How about you folks right here? But I love personal earnings potential <laughs> because personal earnings potential, you tell one of these kids' parents that their children are going to make more Not money. Not only can people save money, they can make yeah. money. If they know how to do this, they will buy this shit in a heartbeat. They will embarrass their kids in a heartbeat <laughs> just so that the parents can understand the potential kids aren't thinking about well maybe the kids are thinking about hey i want to be rich someday i've been a rich man they're not thinking about how they get there oh. the parents see a shortcut can i show you something here and scott brings it to him scott flansberg brings him that check yeah, so i pay you 50 dollars today i own multiple businesses after i get my business degree from arizona state now you're a business major which means that someday you want to own your own company right yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> Man, it's a good point, Mark. I don't know if I hit that one of the nominees. You're 100% right. That is an official nominee. I think I was too excited to get to the military industrial educational complex. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the personal earnings potential. America first. So let me ask you. And I think when they go through the group of professionals on stage, they do harp on that too. You know, we needed extra income. Well, I married with two children. And we needed the extra income. I needed more money. Mike, that's just one example of how math can definitely increase your income. I'm a lawyer. You're an attorney. But mm -hmm. I'm a better lawyer now. Now, baby, because I can do math in my head. Even during negotiations, you want to whip that number out. All right, Chiv, where are we going? Who gets to take home the Lynn Gerhardt themed hardware for this Ronnie for best value problem? I would agree with Mark in that situation. Mm -hmm. I feel like the subliminal messaging throughout was, yeah, you're going to be good at math in order to make more money. Amy, you can do our payroll anytime. And I, I think kids do think that. Yeah, I don't know what they thought in the '90s. <laughs> But I think it was the 90s. even if they don't really think that, they're just like, that'll bring me to a better college. And because I'm at a better college, Arizona State University, make more money. Can't do it better than that. Then that leads to more money. You know, yeah. I feel like that's totally the root of this whole product. I didn't even know what a cute root was. But... Reward based motivation. Right in the center, but I agree. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Matt mm -hmm. was Instagram in 1990. You've got me. Wait. I never saw any nudes in math. Rock the bikini again. You were doing the wrong math. Is there a way I can do it wrong? You could get it Almost. on your calculator. There was video games. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, TI 83. You could get nude people on there. All right. Grab your calculator and do 580008. <laughs> you Wait. could do boob. How many yeah. zeros? How many yeah. eggs? Yeah, you did it wrong. Boob. Right? Okay. Yeah. A lot hey. of good nude stuff on the calculators. <laughs> great nudes and great boobs also come with great <laughs> potential earnings. That if you don't pick up math young as a child, it can actually slow down or stop how far you can go in life. It can limit how much money you can make. And everyone knows if you're going to get a good job, you need math skills. Huh. But I'm a commercial <laughs> litigator. Right? Amy, you can do our payroll anytime. Now, you're a business major, which means that someday you want to own your own company, right? Yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> Mom, that's got to make you feel very proud. All right, it is time for the Nancy Nelson. Hi. 
What's your name? Formerly the Terry Scott magic. Award for Best Testimonial. So our testimonials <laughs> oh, this week, shit. we're not opening up to every goddamn person they talk to because that's all this was. Like, you do math now? Like, you hated math? Yeah. You do math now? Like, yeah. So we'll cover a lot of people who have different roles throughout the show and some of the other categories, but for just the Nancy Nelson, let's focus on number one. Dr. Mary Hatfield from Arizona State University. A woman who's devoted her life to math. The teacher to the teachers. Trainer to the trainer. Shout out, Tom Purvis. I have to go along with Dave. Mm -hmm. She said traditional teaching is boring, and she teaches teachers how to teach what they're teaching. And you're in charge of teaching teachers what to teach and how to teach. And she's a fan. That makes it come alive. Also, we have Tina Jansen. Tina Jansen. Now, you finished high school, but, but you didn't go on to college. We used to fear math. But now she's parlayed her math skills into a great job in the billing department at a hospital. We got a bleeder! And she's also known as the human cash register. Come on, don't be modest. Tell us what happened, Tina. We also have Joseph Don't Call Me Charlie Manson, attorney at law. You're an attorney! Who always hated math, but now uses his powers of calculation to win big in the courtroom, baby! Even during negotiations, you want to whip that <laughs> So... If you're in Virginia and you've been hit by a truck, call Joseph Manson. But I'm a commercial litigator. We have Amy Grow, the Arizona State University college student who plans to own multiple businesses now that she knows man. Amy, you can do our payroll anytime. And our final nominees are Janelle and Zach Miller, combo platter, mom and son, also from Arizona. And Arizona! Zach was the student who knows the dates. You can amaze your friends by telling them the day of the week they were born on in just seconds. That's our slate of Nancy Nelson. Hi, what is your name? John. Nominees. Yeah, easy. <laughs> That's not hard at all. <laughs> easy, easy. That's very, very easy. Joseph Manson. I love a good lawyer. <laughs> Regular Don Law. Do you need a lawyer? I'm Don Law. I'm a lawyer. No lie, like... He's the goofiest guy on it. His name's Joseph Manson. Joe Manson. <laughs> he looks like a freak. He looks like he's smoking cigarettes. Fettuccine Alfredo. But uh, his was actually the most compelling usage of this thing. He gave you a real life usage of what a successful person could just like fucking flex with. Flex pace. And he just does it in the courtroom. It's just a lot easier for him to come to a restaurant and let us do it nope, for him. We're going to sue you because the defense is wrong. He didn't come to terms after just being so fast at math. You're losing so I'm like, yeah, this is like a celebrity lawyer. An ambitious junior counselor. I think this is like the perfect type of person to do it. Like CEOs, hey, Apple. celebrity lawyers. Do you have goldfish or any kind of fish? Do you need someone to feed you fish? I'm Don Law. I'll feed you fish. Just call. I'm going to have trouble staying away from Janelle and Zach Miller. Janelle, mom, you must be very proud of Zach. Because I think that it's really interesting for some reason. Draw your own conclusion. But it's a missed opportunity. And I think I agree with Mark on Joseph Manson because he seemed like the only character of the bunch. Kind of all around a weird he guy. was working it. Yeah. yeah. They mm -hmm. tried with Amy. Now you're a business major, which means that someday you want to own your own company, right? Yeah, a couple of them. But Manson was great. Joe Manson. Cut that. Uh oh. Take that. He said something like <laughs> Man Manson was great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Dylan. Sloppy nacho <laughs> He had one. Didn't he say something like eight million? He's like, yeah, everybody would like that. Let's assume that my client owes you eleven million or something like that. It was yeah, yeah. so sleazy. He did so good. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. I can handle that. You talking millions? You talking to Joseph Manson? You're talking to Bill Buffalino? I'm going to jail. I don't want to pay it all, so I say, Mike, look, I'll give you fifty three percent, okay? And that's going to be five point eight three million. That's a lot of money. Well, Mike, if you think I'm going to give you eight point five eight million dollars, blossom. He's mine. I take him. One's yeah. mine. You can't have yeah, it. take him, give him a nice kiss on the mustache. That's a good looking boy. I want to kiss you. Yeah, man. I'm a fan <laughs> a of fanson. Zach Miller, who I think deserves one, a scholarship to play football at Arizona State, and two, um, like a co creator credit because he's all over the place in this one. Go ahead and stand right he here. He was in the classroom. He was the one who Scott made the cube root joke with. And I didn't even know what a cube root was, let alone do the stuff in your head. Of 195,112. What's that, Zach? 58. And then he's throwing darts at the board. He's there with his mom. And let's see. The first date, Zach, is May 12th, 1984. What day of the week did that fall on? Uh, Saturday. But yeah, Joey Manson, he's the dude. I want to look like that guy. I did like that Mary Hatfield was so credentialized. And you're in charge of teaching teachers what to teach and how to teach. And that she was referred to as the teacher to the teachers. Trainer to the trainer. I love that. I can't believe this. I'm telling you. Hey, I'm a member of the Manson clan too. <laughs> Shit. Uh-oh. I don't know. Uh-oh. This one's trouble. 
Chev, what do you got? I didn't really like Manson, to be honest. Oh, oh we got a protester. This is where I think we differ. Are we against the law? Be legal. I feel like he was just so, like, mm-hmm. cliche. What do I got to do? Right. You need a lawyer. I'm Don Law. I'm a lawyer. I don't know. It was just, it rubbed me the wrong way, personally. Listen, you're the expert. You tell us. Who is it? Who gets the hardware, man? Yeah. Damn. God. I kind of liked uh, the kid you were talking about, Sturdy. Oh. Janelle. Mom, you must be very proud of that. I feel like bringing in the dates almost made the method. Like, it's not just adding and subtracting and, you know, doing the square root. You grounded. Right. It. It's doing other things. Like, you're bringing dates into it. And then yeah. his testimonial really made that like an actual kind of like a side piece. What other side pieces could we have? Zach Miller had some side pieces, too. If you want to see what 13 inches looks like. Right. <laughs> In, in those cassettes, you never know what other mysteries there could be. So your own conclusion? There's got to be some subliminal shit on there, too. Right. <laughs> so that's what I went for. That's a good point. Listen, you're the boss. My boss was stingy as well. You're the boss, man. And Zach Miller was the tight end for the Bears a few years ago. Had his knee exploded. Remember that? for the touchdown by Zach Miller. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That yeah. was disgusting. Different Zach Miller. Yeah. Full disclosure, that Zach Miller was born in Wahoo, Nebraska, and was also born in 1984. And this Zach Miller was way over six years old, and he and his mother Janelle. get to take home and hang on their refrigerator. The Nancy Nelson, hi, what's your name? Formerly the Terry Scott Looks Magic Award for Best Testimonial. Here's to you. It's Miller time, baby. And I didn't even know what a cute root was, let alone do the stuff in your head. Of 195,112. What's that, Zach? 58. Now, Zach brought his mom with him. Janelle, mom, you must be very proud of Zach. And let's see, the first date, Zach, is May 12th, 1984. What day of the week did that fall on? Uh, Saturday. So now it is time for the... Whole peel pasta maker. How can chocolate pasta taste good? (laughs) Award for best condescending kid. So this is a quick one. So these are only the kids who are shown a couple of times. They show up when Mike first goes on his field trip to Choya Junior High School in Phoenix, Arizona. He quizzes four (laughs) children. First up is Nicole, who does some addition. And she's like, that's pretty easy, thanks. That was pretty easy, thanks. That was easy? Yeah. He gets Kyle, who just... Looks like a Kyle. Hey Kyle, what's 24 times 97? Um, 2,328. <laughs> it's right. It takes me longer to put in the calculator. Carly has the creepy kid from the outsider sit in the back. Pony boy. Making goofy faces, which is probably her best case to win. Now, here's six-time world champion. And last but not least, our reigning Ronnie Champ, Zach Double Stack Miller. What a time for Zach Miller. The cube root kid. Maybe his level of condescension wasn't quite high enough. What's wrong, Eli? You know, <laughs> the first girl gave it to me. Really easy. You can do it. Anybody can do it. Yeah. That's pretty easy. Yep. That's pretty easy. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Oh, man. Thank you. Yikes. Thank you, next. So I'm going to have to say next. Yikes. Despite wanting Zach Miller to repair his knee and take home a second, Ronnie, I think that Nicole is the best condescending kid, and I believe that chocolate pasta does taste good. The chocolate pasta was great. I really liked it. <laughs> I liked the chocolate pasta. Because of her tooth. I don't eat meat. I'm with you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. I thought that's the best one. I disagree. Kyle, I don't think was condescending. He was just a bit caught off guard, and he was like in his own head. In your head. And I think he couldn't actually be a condescending kid because of that. But Nicole knew what she was doing. She's like, this old man in front of me thinks he's smarter than me. Smart. Yeah. That was pretty easy. Thanks. Yeah. Beautifully done. We have no response. That was perfect. And Carly gets it right so fast. Yeah. She didn't have time for any sass. No. Yeah. He literally didn't get it punched into the calculator fast enough. Yeah. Like he like makes a comment about it. And you got like the one, two punch. But yeah. Nicole Stone Cold. I mean, Carly didn't have quick response, but she did have kind of an important character show up, which those who are live streaming can see. Can I show you something here? Whoa. This kid. That Leo? Steve. Whoa. Leonardo DiCaprio. Soda Pop. Whoa. That's who was my guy. One's mine. You can't have it. Matt Dillon in middle school. Do we remember him? No, don't remind me. It makes me feel really bad. You remember this one? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. The kid from The Outsiders. Directed by Francis Coppola. Okay, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> Zach, there you are, Zach. I like Zach, but I'm going to fall in line. You guys have convinced me that 
Nicole was funny just by being mean and was like, I don't think I want to put up with Mike Levy. You have a good nose. Which is how a kid should probably respond to a dorky Mike Levy. I can handle that. Yeah. I bet she said something about his sweater that they had to cut out because it was yeah. really personal. And Mike's like, God damn it. I God. don't know why we're doing this. I don't know how I could do this at home with any other machine. It's just showbiz, kid. Can't keep his hands off me. <laughs> how much does your dad make? She's like, doesn't matter. He doesn't own those shitty sweaters. He's I like, wore a beautiful skin tight dress. He has a late night show. Jealous? He's like, oh, yeah. oh man. Dial a joke sucked. When things don't work out as planned, it's time for dial a joke. Bio and soda? <laughs> Throw the broccoli away. Drink the water. Chiv, are you going to swing us back and steer us away from mean Nicole? I don't think she was mean. <laughs> I think she had a legitimate easy problem and she just let it be known. It's what it is. I have no issues with that. If yeah. I were the teacher and she said that to me, I'd say, okay. It's pretty easy. Thanks. Right. She didn't say it like that, though. How many push-ups you want to do here, pal? Yeah. That's messed up. That's how I heard it. You misrepresented. <laughs> yeah. I alone... How do you prove an ignorance? I think he misremembers... What would you do? Give her a harder one next time? But Mike, bring me the other girl down that gave me the real hard division problem. I want to show her how to do Good something else. Because of that, Jared? Yeah. I feel like she's giving positive feedback. Yeah. You know? She's mm -hmm. not challenged. Take a look at some of these charts. She's not being like, this is ridiculous. Why am I even doing this? She's just saying... That was pretty easy, you know? That's pretty easy. Thing. But isn't that We're a reflection of the failure of our educational system? And why is Japan <laughs> so far ahead of us right now? China. We're challenging Nicole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nicole's wondering why Japan is so far ahead of us. I just want to say, <laughs> this is bringing back a lot of memories now. Uh, like a memory question. It's... Uh... Uh-oh. I remember seeing, like, somebody do that thing where he was, like, punching in the calculator. I don't know. It might have been the same exact infomercial. I don't even know. But I just remember from past years. 2020. And he was just like... I can't even punch it in fast enough. And I'm just like, freaking, you should have it punched in already. Like, <laughs> calculators are <Yeah>. faster. <laughs> the, the fast that you can't type fast doesn't mean that human brains are faster than calculators. Take that for that. Yeah. Well, that just... <laughs> No, yeah. no. You're, you're, you're totally right. <laughs> the war on calculators was not won during this infomercial. <laughs> if it were truly fair, they'd have it punched in already. Well, and then they would say it, and then you would just press enter. Go. Yeah, but that's the rebuttal version called the robot calculator, where it <laughs> is a faster calculator than the human calculator could do. Nude. Tank. And it's right. already punched in there. Yes. I think you're onto something. I think we can one up this one. Yeah. But do we yeah. as a nation distrust computers right now? That's the test that you never see on TV. Yeah. In 1990. Isn't that kind of, that's maybe a thing, you know? No. I said no. I feel like we distrust it more now. That's right. Yeah, I feel like everyone was so yeah. optimistic about, they're like, oh my God, I cannot wait to right. get my pack bell and do some ski free. You've got mail. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. That. Nice prodigy. I forgot about that. Like Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet. Goodbye. But I'm talking about computation stuff, man. No one was skeptical. Right? Nobody eats like that. Nobody. I'm talking about like early engineering stuff. Well, I uh, graduated from college with an engineering What's degree. It? You want me to plug that in here? You want me to... You want to put this in here? <laughs> find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. Using nothing but that. You think that idiot box could do maths better than me? Come on, yeah. guy. Hey. Whoa. Hey. Come on, guy. I am a white man. Yeah. Six years of high school, I can fucking do this. Don't shut up. I got this. Turn that fucking thing off. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go toe to toe with Joseph Manson. Uh, Mike, if you think I'm going to give you eight point five eight million dollars, glossy in court. <laughs> oh. Right now, just to prove to you. Listen, what do I gotta do? Do you need tuna salad? I'll make a tuna salad. Call me. I'm Joe Manson. I'm a lawyer. Are you lawyer. tired of the same old potato salad? Do you need someone to make you some new potato salad? I'm Don Long. I can make you some new potato salad. Just call. So, Trevor, is anybody getting any chocolate pasta? I'm going to have some children come up and make some chocolate pasta. Just pick a name. <laughs> um, um, Carly. Hey, hey. Whoa, nice. congratulations to Carly <laughs> and the creepy kid sitting behind her. Yay. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, the tag team. All right, Carly, your problem is 93 squared. 8,649. Not through pushing. <gasps> You're right. <laughs> Very good. It's time for the Joe Fowler Look at that. Award for Best Look. <laughs> Watch. So, there's a special one this week. <laughs> <laughs> Our first nominee is the man, the myth, the human calculator himself, Scott Flansburg. I want you to meet a friend of mine who is fondly referred to as the human calculator. You'll see why. Scott Flansburg. Rocking mm. full on mullet, wire rim glasses, <laughs> semi salmon shirt. <laughs> semi, -salmon. semi salmon. He looks like a Golic. Remember that? Yeah. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he, he has Golic level <laughs> swagger looking great. We got Mike Levy, who, due to the offsite, the field trip was rocking more than one sweater. We had a multi sweater mm-hmm. situation, yeah, which was fantastic. It was a good night. And then our boy, Zach Miller, again, rocking the bright <laughs> pink tee in the classroom. And then when he's on stage, He's going with the Mike Levy starter kit. I mean, this is pretty powerful stuff. It's not going to damage the wood underneath this. No. He's got the glasses. He's got the sweater. He's here to party and throw darts, and he's all out of darts. You can't smoke in here, Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dave. Yep. Dave. Darts are good. Oh, okay. It's Scott Flansburg. No. It's Scott Flansburg, no. and there's no doubt about it. This is a strange man. This is a very <laughs> strange man that comes on set. You know, you could show any Gen Z person this infomercial and they'd be like, ha ha ha, the outfits, ha 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 ha. Check out what happens to some of my Dewar students when they go shopping. If they spent two seconds paying attention to Scout Flansburg's swag, his aura. There's no limit to what we can do. They would just go, what was going on? Here's the trick. What was going on here? Just keep an open mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, there'd be genuine concern from a generation as to oh, like yeah. what was going on style-wise and vibe-wise. Incredible, baby. Incredible. This is making me feel not right. I just did it right in front of you. What do you think? And that's exactly how they should be feeling. Yeah. yeah. I myself love Well, it. I mean, it's hard to pick Zach Miller. I mean, I saw enough darts on the stage between Joseph Manson and Zach Miller throwing him and Joseph smoking him. So. Yes. Smoking. He's out. Mike Levy's a tough one because that's his uh, suit. Brian, you're in a suit. Aren't you worried about that? Yeah. That's his persona he's wearing all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> Scott Flansburg. I think at this time of Scott Flansburg's life, and Dave, I agree with everything you said. I don't even want to go over that again because you're completely right. But that's right. I think this is where Scott Flansburg took a turn. I think he thought he was sexy at the time. Mm. And I think he was doing all these things. And you look at him now, and I'm not like not here to like shame anybody or whatever, but he's not going for that anymore. He's going like <laughs> subtle. Yeah. And I think back then the shirt. I clean my husband's shirts every week. The glasses. Here is a glass, right? The mullet was like, hey, look at me. I'm a goalie. Hey, Mike. Yeah. yeah. He's also kind of like a goalie and a Dahmer. He looks a lot like Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer. I suppose it could have turned into a, a, a normal hobby like yeah. with the mullet yeah. and the glasses too yeah, it kind of does yeah yeah pretty good company right yeah i mean hey i mean who's more famous than jeffrey dahmer not not many you know that's that's a household mm-hmm. name especially mm-hmm. in the 90s right i think <laughs> america loves them some athletic mathematicians i want to look like that guy athleticians like, like jared yeah it's such a yeah. gold story yeah. Remember when the linemen would be good at math and people would be like, oh, that's so great. You know, they thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> there's some basketball player who's just a math nerd for some reason. People go yeah. crazy Like for Jared. That. Yeah. Or good at singing yep. on like stage and stuff. Yeah. Those renaissance men, you yeah. know? I mean, we don't know if Plansburg is an athlete. According to Billy, the things that are important to athletes and celebrities are the same things that are important to everyone. But we don't know he's not. He looks like he could have played a little offensive guard. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. He's no Zach Miller, though. He looks like he benches about 500 pounds. <laughs> yeah. He's a goalie. You said it very well. His aura was very, it was very captivating to me, I feel. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like he was the perfect guy for that. Like, that's just one example of how math can definitely increase your income. Yeah. And his mm-hmm. mullet, he rocked it. And just like the look <laughs> on his face, like he would like pout his lips. He was totally captivating. I feel like everything one by one was goofy, but as a mm. unit, it just fit perfectly. Yes. Yeah. And it was outstanding. He was the package. If you want to see what 13 inches looks yeah. like. <laughs> Dude, if this were an actual instructional math video that like you could show your class and they could get a kick out of it. Hey, I'm kicking. If you showed this to your class every year. Every day. You would have to give like a trigger warning and be like, I just want to warn you guys. There's this Flansburg. <laughs> we got this Flansburg coming up. Over 30 years ago. Don't be alarmed. It's not his fault. It's nobody's fault. This is a strange man. Just, he would definitely be the, the top. Yeah. That's, We'd right. have to get right. through <laughs> the impact right. he made just visually. Maybe that's why he's an auditory, not visual mental calculator. Maybe that's what that right. quote meant. They're mm-hmm. like, don't look at him. Look what you got. It's not going to help anyone. <laughs> Flags out for Flansburg. <laughs> Let your Flansburg flag fly. So yeah, that's, that's a unanimous one. Yeah. It was an uphill battle all the way for Zach Miller. Zach Miller! Levy. Now here's the host of Amazing Discoveries, Mike Levy. Always looking great, you know? And in this instance, it's kind of to his detriment. The first time you see it, you're like, whoa. Whoa! And you see it every time you're just like, of course he looks good. It's Clooney. It's like, yeah, whatever. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? It's a great band. It's a bad band. It's like pizza, baby. It's That's good no matter what. There's music in the yeah. air. Yeah. 
Eating dessert alone like I'm fucking Scott Plansberg. Nice. I like that. I want you to hear a very emotional story. Here's the trick. Scott Plansberg, bring me the other girl. To- okay, bring out Scott's friend. Just keep an open mind. Take your time. Unlock the human calculator that's inside of all of us. All right. Our final Ronnie category. The Jan and Nan <laughs> here. Here. Try the paint Award for Best Tangentially Involved Participant. Our first nominee is Girl Scout Troop number 1545 from Van Nuys, California. We have an entire Girl Scout troop here in our audience. We have accountant Ray Gate from Pinnell Curve Forester, the man with the bell. Bing! I like my accountant seen but not heard. Peek-a-boo. And our final nominee is Louis Vuitton, Louis Robutton, uh, juvenile probation officer who brought Bobby to task but also got to be on TV and show off her costume jewelry. Louise Rubanen, you're a juvenile probation officer. I don't know. I feel like Ray Gate, by saying nothing and just using a calculator and then ringing a bell, he was like the punchline to every joke. He was the applause light indicator. He was the straw that stirred the drink. If they didn't have that bit in there, if they just had just like a screen that had the right number popping up behind them, it would not have nearly the pop of somebody sitting over on a side stage with a bing and showing the number every time. So I feel like that Uncle Ray really helped pull things together. And good for Pinnell Kerr Forrester getting some free pub. Good for them. Or did Mike Levy sell this thing too? No, they're probably his accountants. He's like, hey, yeah. can I borrow Ray's? <laughs> hey, Ray, come to the set. And he's like, I, I don't want to do that. He's like, well, tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pinnell said you're here today, so sit down. Oh. You're sitting here nodding. Yeah, he's tough to knock off the top. Strong silent type. Big tree fall hard, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Louise was pretty awesome, though. Mike, they give up on themselves. But again, she awesome. loses because they don't do the full on sappy moment. I want you to hear a very emotional story. Where it's like, I've been watching young men fail for so long. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you need that. You need that. If she should have brought Bobby out in cuffs, yeah, and sat yeah. him down, yeah, you can be released from those cuffs if you can get this problem right. <laughs> I'm sneaking them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Girl Scout troop—they're adorable, adorable, but it's kind of too easy. They're straight down the middle. Just a bit outside. Two one the count. It's Ray Gate. Ray Gate. It has to be Ray Gate. Ray Gate. It's Ray Gate. Ray Gate. The red button. Red the green button. Green the binary nature. The cold stare mm-hmm. that we won the, the cold, cold war. war. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you. We won the cold stare. Yep. Yeah, we won the cold stare. When I was going up the stairs. Ray Gate. You guys know I'm always going to go with a guy like Ray Gate. <laughs> He's like a David Lynch character, just like sitting off in the corner. Is it the dad from Eraserhead? Yeah. 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 That's just like super creepy when you start thinking about why he's there, what he's thinking. So I love a good guy off to the side, just like as in a very important role, just doesn't get any kind of credit on screen. It's awesome. So yeah, Ray Gate. I love a good guy. Off the it side. cleans the outside. Shiv, can you possibly go against Ray Gate, CPA from Pinnell Kerr Forest? I'm going to go Ray Gate here. Yeah. Nice. I think it's extremely interesting <laughs> yep. that his role is so important as the calculator check guy. And we almost need that to prove that the human is correct. And without the calculator, you would never know. So it's Ooh. almost like proving that you need a calculator. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like the counter counter culture. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Yeah. It's just like, like okay, I'm a human calculator, but how do I know for sure? Let's get the real calculator. Really? So why do I need the human calculator? <laughs> it's just, That's a good point, sir. Yeah. There's a full circle there. Yeah. And he was never yeah. like punching it in good while point. they were doing it. He had the answers ready. Right. He's hitting ding as they're saying it. So it's like, that's interesting, man. Just to make it interesting. That's a catch 22. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is a catch yep. 22. Do I go to the calculator or do yeah. I trust myself? Believe me. Yeah. You're screwed either way. You draw your own conclusions. If you're selling the product. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh-huh. The human calculator, you're screwed either way. <laughs> <laughs> now that's sales. Accountants trust the process. Yeah. They don't trust themselves. They trust a process. I said no. Let's play goal line. I don't know how to do a super cut for this since he didn't talk. It'll just be those bell dings. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Yeah. Cue it up. Mm-hmm. Just to make it interesting, 
We've enlisted the help of Ray Gaden. Now, Ray Gaden is a certified public accountant from a nationwide accounting firm, Panel Curve Forrester, and he's here to check Scott's accuracy. He's going to follow along with Scott using his adding machine here. And Scott, for every correct answer, you're going to hear this sound. But Scott, should you give us a wrong answer, Ray's going to give you one of these. Okay, thanks, Ray. Man. Woof. That's it. I mean, yeah. I got nothing else to share with you guys. You've learned all about my mediocre math skills. Jared, thanks for bringing up probably my last positive math achievement. Nice job mm. by you. Mm-hmm. Well done. I feel like we were on the same level till a certain point. Well, and then you just. I literally can't. <laughs> Because <laughs> the last math class we had together was one of my first great heists was yes. trigonometry. Yeah. And we had a teacher who, you know, you talk about results over process. She didn't care what you had to do to get a good grade and pass her course. She gave you a number of options on how to do it. And whatever you chose to do, she was fine mm-hmm. with. There were kids in our class who would do no homework. And I don't even know if they took the tests, but she offered so much extra credit that they were able to fully replace their grade, not pay attention in class, and just basically have independent study within the class to then also get A's in the class by only doing extra credit. The other interesting thing she did was there was three tests, and she would drop the lowest test score. So two out of three had to be good, and that was basically going to be your grade for the semester. And there was a fundraiser that was running for Daffodil Days, I'm sure it was a wonderful cause. Came out around Mother's Day, so you could buy bouquets of flowers for, I think, five bucks a pop. And what she offered was if you'd buy a bouquet of flowers, you could get 20 extra points added to one of your test scores. And I was like, whoa. So not an existing test score to a previous one. So I had one good test score in the bank already. Uh, We had two tests remaining. And I was like, Okay, so she's offering 20 points per, it's $5 per bouquet. I brought in $25 and I said, I would like 100 on the other test and I'm not going to pay attention the rest of the year. And she was like, (laughs) okay, that's fine. Yeah. She took my $25. More than half the class did that. She took my $25. I got 100 on that test. I got an A for the semester. It was the last A in math I ever got. (laughs) I was strengthening my survival skills more than my math skills, but you know. Well, simple economics. That's Dan, it. I got a 105 in that class <laughs> <laughs> because I bought the flowers. Yeah, buy the flowers. The funny thing is she was the reason why I was the state trigonometry champ because she <laughs> taught us how to do everything really quickly on the calculator, whereas the other teachers like forced everybody to do it by hand. Yeah, She's like, calculators aren't going away. <laughs> right. So then the following year, I was the only one who knew how to wow. do it on a calculator. And that's why I that's won. That's awesome. Whoa. <laughs> Shout out Mrs. Mitchell. Congratulations. WRHS. Yeah, Mrs. Mitchell, yeah. She's a great lady. Jared, why didn't we ever praise you for that state champ? You did. Jared got all the other accolades. He didn't need that too. No, I was in the paper. It was an announcement. Did Howard Herman write about it? Herman. Howard or it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Who's in the sports section? Jared, let me ask you about this, this trigonometry uh, competition you won as well. And what can't you do? <laughs> Does it help you on the field? <laughs> hey, Hermie, cheer up, will you? Yep. <laughs> yep. Howard treated me well. He was a good guy. Yeah, I liked Howard. Except he said that I became the starting <laughs> offensive lineman at UMass because of injuries. And I did not say that. Whoa. He put it in brackets as if I kind of Whoa. was saying that, but I didn't really say that. So I was kind of mad about it. He like that. subtweeted Let's you go. in his article. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. Let's go get him. I was a little mad about that. Yeah. I let it be. Yeah. You're obviously not bitter about it at all because you didn't even bring it up. So it's like, it's not it's definitely not a big deal. So that's great. Whenever I see that article, <laughs> Mm-hmm. The only thing I see are those brackets. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. They kind of ruined the article for me. <laughs> and speak on it. <laughs> I mean, it feels good to talk about it. It is therapeutic. I went into the interview in my brain saying, I'm not going to say injuries gave me a spot because I felt like that was going to be the talk because mm-hmm. that was kind of the talk. But then that's how I got my position. But then the kid came back and I just kept it. Tom Brady. Because I was better yeah. than him. Right. Yeah. So I felt like that was going to be the thing. So I purposefully didn't say injuries and then he just put it in there i was like Phew. he's like i know what you mean You're, that's yeah. cold no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no he uh he read your mind yep he read yeah. your mind mm-hmm. he's a mind reader in an opposite way yes yeah right yeah i guess yeah. you can say that Very does. it doesn't exist it's never landed but forgive and forget <laughs> yeah. yeah 
Yikes. <laughs> Whatever. We beat Burncoat. Who cares? We won the Cold War. <laughs> well, oh, hey, Jared, thank you so much for joining us. Championship level performance. Appreciate the, the math expertise, the insights, and for overseeing the Ryans, keeping us on course. It was a pleasure. Thanks for hanging out, man. It was awesome. You're welcome. It's great seeing all you. Yeah, good seeing you too. You got to come back, Chip. You, you got to come back again. I can speak about a lot of things. Yeah, if we have anything football related, we yeah. go to Big Chiv. Yeah. Like a new football? Like they're just making a new football? Yep. New math, new football. It could be pitched by Joe, Joe, Joe Newmath. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yep, you can get to hair product. But the babes are back. Whoa. Touchy. Invisalign. <laughs> Also touchy. Are mm. you just picking on Dave? <laughs> <laughs> losing my hair, losing my teeth. Anyone who's losing their hair and is missing teeth, talk about any product related to that, Dave. I mean, Dave did call him an idiot flat out tonight. Yeah, yeah Dave, maybe you don't start by calling him an idiot. <laughs> did I say that? I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah. You were trying right to call it. yourself one, but you're like, hey, Jared, <laughs> as an idiot. <laughs> Why don't you tell me about so, you know. Yes, I know. Hey, man, Chib and I spent 35 <laughs> days in a car together. So, you know. We've smelled it. Spoiler the- alert. Mm-hmm. It was 31. Yeah. Talk about Sequel Matt. coming this summer. Yeah. Let's relive every moment. In 10 years. 10 long years. That's a good podcast. We got to drive to Seattle. Let's do it, man. I already have the map. Go up through North Dakota. We're going to South Dakota. Over to Seattle. Up through Southern Canada. Yeah. yeah. Through Banff, as they say. All right. I All love right. you guys. Mm-hmm. Bye. Have fun at your apartments. Right. Mwah. Thank you all for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, or follow on your preferred podcast medium. And for all things Call Now, visit callnowpodcast.com. And if you want to connect with the boys, you can find them at Call Now Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, or send them an email at callnowpodcast at gmail.com. And if you can't fight the urge to pick up the phone and call now, you can leave them a voice message at 617-356-7439. If you call in the next 30 minutes, you might just be the next star of Call Now. Thanks again for listening. We hope you tune in next time to Call Now. Thank you for listening. This has been a B-plus effort. We'll try our next time.